Welcome back to the Adventures in Silvernell, the homebrew fantasy world setting for our online game of Dungeons & Dragons, 5th edition. How's everybody doing? I'm your Game Master, Scott Nicholson, here to play with four of my good friends, Erica Webb. Hello. Tanner Messer. Oh, hi. Andrew Krug. Hey. And Michael Jackson. It's a mushroom. <laughs> How are you guys doing tonight? Pumped. Pretty good. Pretty Bye good. Bye 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 we definitely left on a cliffhanger last time, so uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, make sure you use those channel points. We call them rooter points, so you can influence the game. You can also check out these episodes, every episode, on YouTube, and that's about it. All right, I'm too excited. Let's get into it. Last time on episode 32 of The Princesses of Power, the princesses awoke on an ice cap towards the north. Um, eventually... Uh, some wild shapes later, they were swimming through the water, making their way towards land, trying to get away from these assassins, when they met Gibbity, the, or saw, again, Gibbity, the little fish that belonged to Bok Wajir, who appeared in his ship and picked them up, told them that he was instructed by his brother, Brian Wajir, to come save them. He had no other information. Upon the ship, he noticed that there was someone right there with a knife. It was that second invisible assassin that was after them, but no trouble. They literally kicked his ass until an unexpected random problem occurred. Uh, Gibbity, who was driving the ship from his barrel of water, hit into a piece of ice. The ship uh, got jolted a little bit, and the assassin escaped. Um, Bakwajir offered them a magical item, which was a coin purse, so they could get some gold on their way to this new city they'd never been to. Um... Mira took it from Pontius a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, Mizu took from her father. Uh, 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 Celia took from Bakwajir while he was asleep. And who did Seer take her from? Um, Might oh, Unersef. Yes, Might Unersef. Uh, the foot guy, the right? Yep. Foot guy. <laughs> okay. The foot fetish guy. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> Mizu uh, had a, a confrontation with Voskar, where he said he was working on something to get into the dream plane, and possibly, when he came out of her mouth, uh, stay on the material plane. Um, but she still just wants to go on a date. Uh, Bakwajir saw this, but, you know, she is a warlock. He just advised that maybe when we get the Wimding, don't talk to yourself so much. And then it came to a point where the death book was brought up and princess seer really wanted to know who princess mizu was so adamant about killing with that book saying as how they can kill anybody at any time why do they need this book mizu before she could respond voskar in her head told her that he loved her um some might see it as a distraction some might see it as actuality whoever thinks it's actuality has not been watching and she expelled him from her mouth and made them tell everyone around that uh, he was, in fact, in love with her. But then Princess Seer brought out that magical box of whispers, which just used its third use. And no, he does not love her. This is manipulation. She sucked him back into his mouth. They continued on the drive, or the boat ride, eventually reaching land, where they saw out the window was... Brian Wajir, box brother, turns out the entire time it has been Vafiel. So we begin now tonight. You are looking outside the window. Um, the ship is kind of 
in like the river a little bit to the side, Baki is immediately going to get out, jump off the ship, run up, and hug his brother. Uh, they're about 30 feet away. Vafiel is standing at what looks to be almost a Rolls Royce um, with magic arcane pumping through all the parts of this car. Um, they're about 30 feet away before anything happens. What would the princesses like to do? Welcome back. Um, welcome back. Uh, as Bakwajir is uh, hugging and embracing his brother, Brian is, you know, on the over his shoulder, and Sa'ir is still in that boat window, just staring at Brian Vafil. As he hugs his brother, she's just in the boat, just staring, daggers into him, unmoving, just kind of waiting to see what the rest of the sisters do. She's very, um distracted by the sights she's seeing i feel like mira would look over and see like steer just like staring daggers out the window and i'm like do you know this brother that he has do you know this person it seems that the sea is not as big as i hoped it was um we may have crossed paths oh not really sure what he's doing here or if he's trustworthy so that that's not really to say much he could be a complete dick or another assassin you just never really know but i do know of him no, that's i mean that's good to know i i respect your opinion about people i don't know who the hell that is so do you think that we should try to mention that should we try to should we try to dip we don't really know why he's looking oh yes you see yeah, she looks, Seer looks directly at Celia, and she's like, this really isn't, like, my business to, like, put out there or anything, but, like, do you want to deal with this right now? Princesses, or... I would like to introduce you to my brother, Brian Wajir. Um, uh, and he just kind of nods. He's also looking at Seer. He says, princesses, um, you can call me Brian. I feel like Hi, Mizu would definitely be the first to, like, approach, and she'd do her stereotypical handout. Hi, Princess Mizu Mino of the Azirian Kingdom. It's so nice to meet you, and thank you so much for the rescue. We were really in desperate need of that, to be honest. He will take your hand. He will kiss it lightly. It has been an honor, uh, Princess Mizu. Um, welcome to land. I imagine you all have a lot of questions. I am prepared to answer all of your questions. I'm glad to see you're all alive. Um, thank you, Bach. And he's like, yes, yes, yes. Her eyes. Um, now, um, yeah. maybe some explanation as in what is going on? <laughs> I did, however, tell them, I hope you don't mind, brother, about your past. Oh, no, that's, that's quite all right. That's saved me some time. Um, quickly, Bach, I'm going to need you to do me a favor. Yes, anything, brother. I need you to make your way towards Balahu. Balahu? <laughs> Why? I was making my way towards the Bantu Marsh. He's going to hand out this letter and hand it to him. Everything is there. We, we are very pressed for time. Um, if you want to go ahead and start offloading your magical items into the car, I will do what I can to get gold for you, and we'll prepare it back at the Boggins, if that's fine with you. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I don't want to rush. Maybe perhaps we could have some cake or some tea or something. You know, these princes are ex very exciting. Oh, and he uh, jumps back onto the ship. I also, brother, um, before I get to the items, he pulls out his coin purse. I made sure to have a little extra for you. That is about 115 gold. He puts it in Vafiel's hand as he jumps back off the ship. Vafiel shakes it. Are you certain? He looks down, looks over at the princesses, looks back. Yes. Yes, well, maybe I should go. <laughs> um, well, to uh, toodaloo. It was very nice to meet you, princesses. If you need anything, I'm sure my brother here can get you in contact with me. I'm really dearly going to miss you all. Oh, come here. Well, we will be missing our favorite other brothers, so... <laughs> He's yeah. going to hug you all. Gibbity, come out of the... Oh, well, you don't have legs. He's going to reach up, reach into the barrel, pull him down. You want to say goodbye? Gibbity, 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 gibbity. Uh, Mizu will reach forward and give him a little pet and, like, a little smile. Uh, Celia yeah, holds out a fist, a fist bump. Uh, Bach will take his little fin and hit it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> See, Celia, like, gives it a European kiss, like, a one on each cheek. Oh. The fish. Oh, dude, I'm going to miss you so much. 
But we'll be in contact. Whatever it is my brother has me doing at that shard mine relaxation island, I'm sure is very important. I'll be back as quickly as I can. All right? Thanks again, Mark, for everything, really. You're like a lifesaver. We're gonna miss you so much. Cute. I'm going to miss you most, Scarecrow. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> quote I came up with. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um... Ta-ta! Oh, and tell that little thing inside of you. Maybe work on that temper. <laughs> Adiochio Potocchio. He's gonna jump on the ship. Alright, give me turn this thing around! Um, as that, that boat name? starts to move, Vafiel's just going to look at you, Seer. Seer, I'm, I'm not here to kill you. I have no ill intention. Well, that would have been awkward for you if you were, because you would have died, so good choice. Why are you here? Look, the water is not safe for you. Have you all talked about the situation? About the assassins? Uh, we didn't need to talk about it. We've been killing assassins since we last saw you, um, as I'm sure you're intimately aware of. But we are aware. You see him just staring at Celia. Princess Celia, it's very good to see you. Hey. You got a cool boat. That's a boat? Uh, this, they, they call it a car. <laughs> car. Yes. Mm. Uh, the mechanical technology made in Van Griecht mixed with the ingenuity of Arcana from Wimding. Um, yeah. The uh, Boggins loaned it to me so that we could safely cross the Scarf Cthulhu. I'm sure you all have many questions, so um, if you all could just help me put these items in the... You know what? Why don't you all just hop inside and I'll take care of it? Uh, are Van Griech and uh, Wyndham having some sort of alliance that they're trading uh, technology in Arcano gears? Uh, Mr. Wajir? Yes, there are... Yes, uh, there is so much um, I will tell you about trade and diplomacy on the land. Uh, let me just quickly get these into the car. And it's he's not my to, first time. He's going to okay. go over to uh, the items and start putting them into the back of the car. Well, if only there was someone to help you with that, Seer gets in the car. Are you asking me to help? Likewise, I get in the car. Mizu's definitely in the car as soon as Seer is. You look Were into you the just... car, and it's way more complicated than any ship mechanisms you've seen. Good thing Where I don't have to run it. Her? <laughs> is there room in there for me? Yes, there's there's room for like two more of you guys. If you like, if we had more people. Cool. cool. Uh, he's going to finish unloading everything into the car. He's going to get into the driver's seat. You see, he's going to operate like at least eight different levers at once, but before the car just shoots out this like yellow. Uh, small, like, wispy blast poof, in every direction from it before it dissipates. And you feel that the whole thing is kind of humming, coming to life. Um, and it starts to move as he's going to turn it around from the beach and make way as you see. The sun is setting, by the way. It's slowly becoming nighttime towards this um, forest of, like, red and orange and yellow green round trees. Um, and he takes off. And immediately, um, you notice he is sweating, um, and there's this awkward silence. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna punch the empty seat real quick. I'm just gonna, like, just the air in front of there, just to make sure that there's no <laughs> invisible assassins. <laughs> uh, he notices you. Well, I can the... see him, so I'm looking, I can, I can, I got the eye still. I didn't get back. Yeah, he notices you in the rear view mirror, and he just kind of lets out a sigh. Um, and he kind of stops huh? the car and pauses for a second. Uh, Princess is the Scar of Cthulhu is very dangerous at night, so we shall be safe, but... There are some things I should tell you. And I'm... I just need you to listen for a moment. And just hear me out. And if you decide you want to get out of this car right now, you can. I'm sure we've got some time to kill before the next round of assassins get here, so just, you know... Make it quick, I suppose. So, uh, Bacchus told me that he informed you of what happened when I was a child? Yes. So 
bits and pieces. I don't know how much of it is exactly accurate since it was someone else's story. Um, but yeah. Does it, does, it ma- does it matter a lot? Yes, it does. Olivine was very cruel. Olivine would take children that he found exemplary and would train and love them until they reached a certain age that he deemed was not adulthood anymore and he would release us back into the wild. And that wasn't whenever he felt you had reached adulthood. And your sister, has she told you about the Order of the Tides? Uh, that actually would have been uh, courtesy of Gortzig. He spilled the beans. Several times. Well, And, and then uh, ran away? For complete transparency, the Order of the Tides is a secret organization that has been operated Formerly. for centuries under the Silver Seas. Um, even before Olivine, it got information from land, and then after Olivine kind of dominated the land, and as you will eventually see, convinced the material land dwellers that it was a dangerous place, it just became more of a secret society under the waves, so to speak. Well, uh, a long time ago, the Order found out about my relationship with Olivine, my capture. And when I was released, I went back into Yarmouth. He had killed my parents, and my brother Bach was raised to his own devices on the streets. That makes sense. Uh, I eventually joined back up with him, and we tried to create a life together, scrounging what we could. When the Order found out that I was in Yarmouth, they sent one of their members, your mother, Queen Arisaline, to gain information from me. She courted me in hopes to get closer to me to get information about Olivine. That I do not blame her for. At that time, she went by an alias, Richeria. We formed a relationship, and he just kind of looks at you all. She became pregnant. Ooh! Um, See your big gasps. That's a hoe name, too, by the way, that she went by, just so we clear. Mm. That's why I wear. Well, I asked her for her hand in marriage. I sincerely loved your mother. And that's when she denied and she revealed her true self. And she told me that the baby had to be squelched. Like (laughs) squelched? Yeah, like, what do you consider squelching? Oh. I begged her not to. I begged her to take my life instead. She refused. She then introduced me to the Order of the Tides, and that I was to devote my life to the Order for the safety of my daughter. Celia. Yes? That was you. I am your biological father. This is awkward for Mira. This is awkward for Celia. (laughs) Here's in her head. Uh, Don't forget about that letter. It's from him. Oh, that was. Oh, the letter was from you. You're the guy. You're Va. You're. So is Brian your name, or is it? My Vafiel. name is Brian. You can call me Vafiel. I I go by both. Whatever you're comfortable with, Celia. I want to be clear. I I want you to be comfortable. That's These seats weird. are like squishy. These seats are squishy. <laughs> Listen. At that time, your mother threatened me that if I ever spoke of who I truly was to you, Celia, I would be killed by assassins. Okay. She, she got used... around it by writing a letter. She used you as leverage for my knowledge of Olivine, which, I must be clear, I had very little. The day I arrived in the Order, I became Vafiel. I changed my name, not Brian. And that same day, the Queen had become the head of the Order. Uh, that position previously belonged to a uh, water ganasi named Kasdan for Linenbrook. He had passed away a couple days before 
the queen's initiation. Well, I, your mother was obviously pregnant, but told the order it was King Thrine's child, your father. Um, I became furious. I revealed to the order that it was my child. And the order demanded that she tell your father that it was his and not mine. Mm. I could see all over her face that she did not appreciate the demand, but she told us that she would do what they asked. Well, I didn't trust her. I scried. I saw what she actually planned to do with you. You were born. She kept her word for that, but I discovered she revealed the entirety of the secret of the order to your father. Well, I was bouncing between admiration to her being honest to her partner, even if she hadn't been before, and anger for revealing something she had revered so much. So I told the order what she did. A Risenling pleaded her case and offered up her what she called her golden child, Seer Goth, as her devotion to the order. I voted against it. I said she should have her memory erased just as anyone else, but they bought it. I couldn't fathom why they folded to such nonsense, but they did. I watched you grow from afar, Celia. Each day, feeling the pit in my heart grow deeper and wider. And, in all honesty, I looked down on Seer. I watched her every move, her every mistake. Her mere existence in the Order represented an evil holding of power by your mother. Playing with the lives of children as if they are currency, just like Olivine did. Thrine was able to know about the Order, um. and... But I continued to watch his struggle. I saw him grapple with the web that his wife had woven. It fortified him into this immense devotion to his other daughter, you, Mizu. He spoiled you to no ends. Your mother caused pain wherever she touched. Seer's magical abilities within the Order was not a born trait, as she was told. It was fostered to cover up her mother's vile actions. Despite your powers now, you were not born into it, Seer. I will give it to you. You have grown by your own volition, but you were crafted for your mother's disguise. I... I'm just going to say, as an outsider looking in on everything that you just said, it seems like you're doing a lot of projecting, my guy. And, I mean... Not sure if that's a new concept to you or not, but it sounds like you just hate their mom and you think she's a hoe, and then you have like a problem with females. So it's like, do I respect your opinion in the first place? Nah, I don't Possibly. know. Possibly. It's kind and of okay. Possibly. I feel like there's a, feel like there's a club on the for fence. not like mom. The fence. I was hurt. Yeah. I was badly hurt. I was you used, were hurt. and I was threatened. Well, I was right about Seer. When I heard about her movement of Gorzik to the Udothing court, it was a reminder of that pain from the past. I I brought about the idea of Seer's memory should be erased before we had our meeting yesterday. However, I never voiced that she should die, because she did not know. It was a mistake, but not in a cantankerous betrayal, as her mother made it sound. I realized yesterday that even erasing her mind was too harsh. Okay, my pain blinded me to the bigger picture, which I will admit. So before the meeting yesterday, in the Order, it was decided Celia would come home to the Order and Seer would be erased out. I was elated to once again see my daughter face to face. But after Seer left on her own accord and took Celia with her, the Queen ordered the assassins to kill them. Not the Order as she projected. It was not our idea. It was hers. It was her decision. But Seer left before us other members could protest the voice. That was not our decision. It was a Rizaline. Again, seeing her children as disposable pawns so she could remain seen as powerful. Okay, when Seer and Celia left, I was furious with a Rizaline and pressed her again and again to stop, to finally halt this insanity. In her anger and rebuttal, she revealed nothing would stop her. 
She confessed to me many years ago she had poisoned Cassidy for Lennonbrook. She caused her ascension. She had charmed the Order to take Infant Seer in exchange for Thrine's memory of the Order. She was unstoppable, and I was sick to think that I fell for her many years of lies to the Order. You have to understand, your mother, whether you like it or not, she will stop at nothing to remain in power. So I made a decision then and there. I took the knowledge, all of the Order, and I packed it with me, and I left. But before I left, she told me she knew of the food folk. She already knew that they were responsible for the brine in the ocean. She told me she had to retrieve the death book because she foresaw Olivine's return. She threatened to send the assassins after me. Your mother has plans that only she knows, princesses. Believe it or not, it's the truth, and I refuse to allow her any more power. Absolute power has corrupted her absolutely. Now, I had previously left Yarmouth the day after I heard Olivine was gone. Each visit, henceforth, from then, has been a projection of myself. I have never actually been in the Yarmouth chambers for the Order. Okay? I came to Wimding City, and I made a new home. I asked Member Mako to secure a ship for my brother Box so he could visit the land where he and our kind were never welcome. Listen, I do not believe Seer Goth is worthy of her power. And that's just my opinion. A mere making of her mother. But I do not think you deserve to die, Seer. I do not think you're a bad person. So I am here to help where I can, okay? I want to secure your home and safety in Wimding, where you can fix this plate upon the Silver Seas, where on land no assassin will get to you. I want to protect the ocean. I want to protect your father who has fallen prey to your mother's ill-intent lies. My brother and I are now devoted servants to your cause. Because your success is the safety of the entire Silver Seas. Now I will take you to Wimding. You can choose to do what you wish. I have a home secured for you graciously because you rescued the Boggins. They have allowed you to stay. I will be there, but if that bothers you, I'm sure we can find other accommodations for you. I know this is a lot, and I know you probably don't believe me. But I promise you, I am telling you the truth. He's going to start back up the car. Uh, so you're just kind of sits silently. Um, she's not really pressed to speak to him in this moment. So if anyone else like chimes up first, that's a okay for her. Uh, I feel like Mizu would be the first to speak up after a little bit of silence and go, I've always hated that bitch. All of this makes perfect sense to me. Well, fuck you, Mizu. Fuck Wait. me? Fuck you. talking about your mom? Right? Yes! I fucking yes. hate Arisaline! Oh, Why? you hate Arisaline, and all she ever did was you was make sure you were a spoiled little princess while some of us had to go out and fight for our lives. Boo-hoo! Cry me a river! Were you the one who was sent up to be a vicious killer for mom and dad? Oh, I don't- I don't think you were. Didn't you sit at home all nice and pretty while everyone just worshipped you? You're the princess of Azir! You're the princess of Azir! While we all break our backs setting up laws, fighting wars, while you sit at home in the most protected place of all, you should be the most thankful to mother while dad's stealing your fucking book! Pick their allies. I just think that if mom and dad really love us as much as they say or claim that they do, they would have never put any of you guys in that position in the first place. Why do you think they love us? Where did you, where does love come into this? We, the Genasi of Azir, have been being born for years, literally, to fight. The princesses, our whole goal is to defend everyone else at our own expense. Our parents don't love us. They need us. They need us to be absolutely amazing because the sea and the land are obviously in turmoil and no one seems to be doing anything about it. So sorry if mom put on her big girl pants and did it by herself and told literally no one about it because anytime she does, all she gets is backlash. You're just a queen. You're just a girl. What do you know? And apparently it's checks notes, basically everything. I think that we and should all calm down. I think that we should all calm down for the moment. Uh, I don't know. You of... might want to let this play out. No, a lot of a lot of stuff has just been told. I don't really understand a lot of it. Um, but I don't think that us fighting over anything is going to get us anywhere. Sadly, Celia, I, Mike Liu, was 
I guess I can't say born, crafted to kill. So it's just in my nature, it seems, that I like to be a little combative. So I do apologize, but I'm just very annoyed and I don't feel the need to hold in in this moment since, you know, we could die in five seconds from invisible assassins or flying assassins or telekinetic, like, who knows? So, I mean, if we're gonna voice our opinions, this long ass drive should be the moment to do so. I mean, if there's any truth to what this guy is saying at all, it sounds like the assassins might not even come after us on land. I mean, shouldn't we at least give it a chance to, like, see if anything he has to say is right? Like, if any of it makes sense? I don't think that they have to send anyone after us necessarily at the moment because we have something that is directly connected to our family following Mizu all the time. True. And apparently they're all going to the same place after the same thing. So it's sure to be one chaotic threesome when we all get there. Apparently. Now that mom also wants the book. So now mom, dad, and Mizu are all after the same thing. That all started in the same place, which was at our home. So if we already had the book, why did we give the book away to then go after the book? I mean, I guess maybe Voskar would know, but like, I really don't want to talk to him right now. I really don't either. And this is the whole problem with secrets. While the Order may love those things, it's really hard to know what's going on if no one's talking to anyone. And while I was a part of the organization, it was now become very clear to me that there's a lot of distrust amongst all of you, which is whatever. Um, that's not something that I knew coming into it, as I've always been just to ear off. I didn't get a cool alias, so I've always just had to put my life on the line, unlike Avafiel and Gorzig and Mako, because we're all using aliases, except the two people who are the highest targets in the Order, myself and my mother. So, we've always had a pretty relationship, and I'm pretty good at knowing people are lying to me, and I know Arazlan doesn't tell me anything. Why would she tell me anything? She's a queen of many nations and a member of a secret organization who's been doing this for a long time. I don't need to know everything. I just need to know what I need to know. Princess Seer, if I may, we share a bond. Both of us were forced mm -hmm. into the order against our will. Neither one of us had a choice. Here's the thing that makes us different. I, Seer Ga'af, Princess of Azir, have never had a choice. Not in the order, not in where I'm from, not in what I do. So you kind of just get over it and make the best out of your situation. Well, you don't get over it when you're stolen from your parents and they're murdered and he slams on the brakes. And you're taken by a dictator, Seer. I'm doing everything in my power to help you. Your mother is a fucking bitch. And if we let her succeed, she will take over the entire ocean. I cannot tell you what she has planned, Seer. But I am telling you, your father got rid of that book because he saw that it corrupted him. He wanted nothing to do with it. Your mother does not care about you, Seer. You have been brainwashed. Can't you see that? I know this is difficult for you, but do not take it out on your sisters, please. You need them, just as they need you. I'll happily take it out on who I please, and I do not think that my parents care about me, which is how I started this. Your I am aware that I'm expendable. You, There's another... I don't believe that. He... he... <laughs> I don't believe that. Of all the places we could have gone, where I could have went, I got sent to the war zone. So I'm not going to take that as like a, good for you, go fight battles all day. Like, that doesn't sound like a thing. If daddy loved me, he'd probably treat me a little bit more like, hmm. If there was one sister who had a really good time, in my opinion, who would it be? All right. His favorite, Mizu. And if you look at how daddy treats Mizu and how daddy treats me, it looks a bit different. Don't you think, I Bafio? Agree. I agree. But you yeah, have to you think you picked blind? You were the strongest. It's because you picked the wrong side. You decided to be loyal to mom when apparently she's evil as fuck. You decided to be loyal to either of them, which is just stupid. They're both bad. Dad wants your book that you're also going after. He's against you in this moment, and he knows that. King Thrine does not want the book. King Thrine does not wish for anyone to have that book. I That's not what he said. I promise you. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to trust my conversations with my father over the man who tried to steal his girlfriend and fell in love with Your her father, and probably saw against her whole plan. You? You're very oh. contradictory right now, Seer. All I'm asking is that we get to Wimding and for us all to settle and we can figure it out from there. Okay? If you all wish to go off 
and fight your family, that's fine. But at least I warned you that if you do not go forward, the ocean is gone. Well, luckily, considering we're the only people um, investigating the ocean... Not true. ...stress to begin with... Not true. We were kind of sent by you, unless someone else is doing it, because everywhere your we've gone, we've... And your mother's much further than you. And your mother's right. trying well, to kill you. Well, hopefully she's going to kill the sea as well. I mean, you have this false connection that I care about being alive when all I've wanted to do is not be alive. That's why I literally run into battle and protect everyone. I would love to die of honor and just be done with all this absolute bullshit, but that's not a privy, I hope, because if I die, that means one of my sisters has to go and fight. And I know my sisters, and they aren't always built for combat and doing things that need to be done, which is what Arazaline taught me. So whatever she's doing, while it may be chaotic and fucked up, that's fine. I'll deal with her ass when I get there. But right now, the problem I have is everyone, particularly anyone attached to the Order, is just nicks for me. So that's Mom, that's you, that's Vafiel, that's Weird Ass Gorzik, that's Mako. And while, yes, I can love and distrust people simultaneously, I do respect my father and love him. I also think he's a terrible leader. He is really bad at keeping secrets. I don't know if you know that, but, like, that's a weird thing to, like, if you're going to be a guy who's, like, trying to put on a big facade of, of coolness, you can't crack every two seconds, and Dad loves to crack under pressure. So I don't... I understand there's a, a nuance to running a war and a kingdom and using your children as battle pawns, but also... The other option is what Olivine did, which is taking other people's kids and using them for his own machinations instead of being a big boy and using your own kids, which is still fucked up. But at least someone's doing it and not pointing fingers. I understand this is a lot to take in. I apologize for exploding your news here. I trust one day you will see the truth. I employ your emotions. I, I enjoy authenticity. I don't... As much of a princess as I am, I don't need my hand held when people have to tell me their authentic feelings. I'm a big girl. Um, and I've killed lots of people, so I think I'm okay to handle people's feelings. Understandable. Fret not. I'm going to lock the doors right now, because we're about to cross over the Scar of Cthulhu. And at night time is when the worst comes out. Go, 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 go. Your doors lock as you continue to move forward into this black goo tar covered land that seems to be crawling up the trees where the skies are getting darker and the sun is almost completely set around the corner what uh what comes out i've heard many different things i haven't personally seen it myself i crossed here during the daytime but creatures and animals that you would find normally on the land distorted, morphed. The Boggins have a list of drawings from their studies that I believe that they will gladly let you see. But it's best that we don't take any chances for your own safety. Right. Looks kind of cozy. Celia. Mm hmm. I am very happy to see you. I don't expect you to treat me any certain way. I don't even expect you to like me. But I just want you to know that I've missed you. And I'm glad to see that's, you're alive. That's cool. I can't really... See. I didn't have anyone to miss, so I'm... Sorry that I don't feel the same way. Understandable. Listen, I've sent my brother to Balahu. That's where the Order gets most of their scrying scrolls. He's hopefully going to intercept, as per my instructions in that letter. We don't need your mother viewing us. So if there's anything else that you think can aid her in helping see you, I advise we iron that out quickly. The less knowledge she has, the better. That, that thing that Mizu has, for sure, right? Well, that's technically from Daddy, who's a good guy, so I don't know. What thing? Well, it's, it's, uh, it just follows us around. Um, yeah. Mizu will pull it out and, like, present it to him without saying anything. Ah, an ion stone. 
This one looks like it specializes in visuals and audio, and this directly cor corresponds to your father? I mean, I think so. He's the one that sent it to me. Well, it's ultimately your decision. I trust your father, but I also trust your mother to get information out of your father. Oh, he can't keep a secret. Hey. My thoughts Pretty exactly. Easy. It makes sense why she picked him. Like, if you want to run a kingdom without much effort, it would be my fault. It, yeah, it would be yeah. that. Just, just do with that information that as you will. But if you do choose to keep that Mizu, I would recommend that you stay in a place other than where your sisters are. I can keep you relatively close in the city, but you would be putting your sisters at risk. I mean, I can just, like, not turn it on right now. I think that makes the most sense. Oh, yeah, well, if it, it comes with activation, then sure. And then maybe perhaps you could use it to give them the information you desire. True, we could definitely, like, use it to mislead people or, like, trick them. Make it look like we're not really up to anything. Or we could get a- we can find, like, a picture of Shark Food Island and just put the thing right in front of there and then they'll think we're in Shark Food <laughs> Island. I bet, like, I could just, like, bombard them with, like, information about me, just, like, so much. Like, just, like, overwhelm like them. Just, like, like me- what? Hey, um, it's me. Tune in with my morning makeup routine, and you know, just like, it, cause it takes you like about two and a half your, hours. Get ready with me. I mean, no, but that's like the whole point. If I just like clog it up with random bullshit, they'll eventually get like get so bored that they're not gonna think we're up to anything. Yeah, they won't tune in. That's that that could work. I mean, we would have to be very specific in what we show them. They can find context clues in any image, so to speak. But I think that's very intelligent. Thanks. I don't get called intelligent very often, so thank you. I really like this guy. I've got a question that's a little bit of a turn of the topic. Uh, do you know anything about Henry? Yes, your brother. Um, I. Th we believe your brother is a dreamwalker. Someone who can... Well, he's definitely like talked to some of us in our dreams, so... Yes, well, at like, first we questioned if he was cursed or being used by magic with someone else, but all evidence points that when he goes to sleep, he can project outside of his body and step into another plane of existence. Now, he is safe there. They can't hurt him. But you say you've been visited by him? Yeah. 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 Him and, him and uh, was he with the guy? Like, was the guy with him, or do you remember Mira? Or was it like... You may have not been alone. I mean, there. like, the background outside of him was blurry. He was definitely, yeah, so was, like, within like focus. Yeah. Yeah. He was the main focus of this. Yeah. I think he was just checking out. It was nice. Yeah, he was very inquisitive and adorable. No, he's a so cute little guy. Well, he's he's like, a little guy. so cute. The queen has, um, when we were in the order, has told us the things he was saying when he woke up and that the food folk were evil, and they were hurting him, and that they were going to destroy this entire world. However, I now know what she was thinking by the end, so I have to, unfortunately, take everything your mother says with a grain of salt, and we'll just have to discover it for ourselves. If we're counting grains of salt, I have a conspiracy theory. Yes. You can only trust Obviously, you for one. <laughs> Yeah, obviously Arazlene's doing her thing in the sea, but someone's doing something on land, and I, it just seems a little too on the nose for the food folk to just all of a sudden just attack us. Um, but if I were starting a war, it'd be really easy if I were if if I were Olivine and I wanted to start a war. I I kind of do what he did when he couldn't go into the sea. He you know kind of took the fight to them. But if you don't care about either side and you just lie to both of them, if they fight in any sort of manner, that's easier fights for you. I don't think this has anything to do with the sea or the food folk. I think someone else, and I hate the idea that you just mentioned that Olivine could be coming back, but his lazy ass would be involved in this. Someone could be orchestrating a big old kerfluffle between the food folk and the sea folk because the food folk plan involves 
attacking the sea, which would just make them look guilty. But one thing I did learn while I was at uh, Eudothia was everything is not what it seems. And some people just hide in the shadows and whisper secret lies. Um, so there's times when maybe some uh, tactical subterfuge is used. And so perhaps there's a third party at play who's using the hate the sea has for Olivine and the desperation of the food folk for the sea to have a conflict so that way they can just roll in. It's kind of like what those kids from the uh, Dragon Tooth Academy did. Like, they took over the world because Cthulhu attacked the world first and they just had to clean up the mess. It's so much easier than destroying the world yourself. So, I, I mean, we haven't been to the Quins yet, so like, Olivine could just be the Quins. Like, we haven't met them. We don't know what they look like. They killed Olivine, but like, how do you kill the unkillable? You... I suck him? What does that mean? I don't know. The Quins just seem like the per people we should go talk to since they are the killers of Olivine and he's returning. Um, or maybe the Quins are in danger. Like, maybe Olivine's gonna jump back out of the same eye he jumped into? I don't know. Just conspiracy theories. But well, we don't... While I was in the Order, we didn't have any evidence that would suggest otherwise. That theory still tracks with the information we have, which reminds me, uh, Celia, beside you is a blue coral box... If you open it up, it will unveil the information of the order that I stole. Oh, like that. Oh, yeah, now I can do that now. Grab it. Uh, uh, is there a lock or something, or just, yeah, just open it? As you open it, uh, a scroll unfurls, Awful. and a light projection comes off of it, revealing um, the connections from the Order of the Tide to the land and to the sea. Uh, those red lines indicate where we have outreach for spies and for information, but it's not secure. The blue lines represent places we are secure in our information. If uh, you were looking at this map, the top would be the west, and then the right of this map would be the north of the world. So it's just turned sideways. And as you can see, all the way the bottom where Veilcast is, we do not have a secure tie, so to speak. We've spoken with the lizard folk from there, but we do not have anyone in there. So if you do choose to go that way, I I have no more information for you. One of the I'll secret missions that mommy, one of the secret missions that mommy sent us on was to go and make contact with Dale Cass. It wasn't an order mission, but it was definitely a. This is something that you should do for the kingdom. Um, it was more so attached to Rissy, but she's gone now, and I kind of told her I'd carry that torch a little bit if we made it to Veilcast. So I know we're looking for, and I kind of make that symbol, the X with the equal sign through it. Um, and so if you do find him, I plan to get as much information out of him as possible. Well, that makes sense. Should we worry for Arista at all? Do you think she's safe? I don't think they're going to find her. I don't think that I don't think she will know she's in danger, nor will they find her because the wrist is just a invisible wrist half the time. Yeah, and tiny. Like no one looks down that far. Like and she turns invisible now. It's just more. I will say her. currently the order has no information on the whereabouts of your sister. Yeah, we'd Good. never do either. So it makes sense. Oh, I know where this one is. I pull off the finger. Put it back in my pocket. Um, we've still got a little bit of ways to go. It's going to be a few hours. We should get there maybe around 7 to the city. Um, I feel like I've dumped a lot of information on you now. So, You think? I'll, uh, I'll just continue to drive and stay silent to myself. <laughs> if you have any questions about anything on land, I've lived here for about... Eleven days, maybe fourteen days. No, uh, twelve so days. So, big old vet expert. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> that ain't shit, bruh. Well, I, I've lived in Wimding for that long. I haven't really left outside of Wimding, and and eleven days. Yes. Uh, I think I have more land veteranship than you do. I spent quite a, a quite a bit of time in Sublin. Have your eyes adjusted yet? I, I mean, think your daughter has more time on land because she was at Sharkfoot Island and she was always up there drinking. I'm very good at water. Work. To to clarify, I've been to Sharkfoot. I've been to the lands on the islands. I haven't. I haven't been outside of here. Obviously, that's and, how she got here. R right. 
Um, also, Wimding is a very joyful place, but the land has been brainwashed Fruitful. by Olivine. Uh, <laughs> different direction. So they're they're not going to be as welcoming as you would think. They're not going to be mean. Honestly, I haven't met a rude person in Wimding yet, but they will be skeptical. AKA so all good. your all your charisma checks will have a minus three. This is like a, a pro olivine area, the, right? I guess the kind of the world is. I wouldn't say pro olivine. I would say some pro, some extremely fearful. You also have to understand, olivine was not the kind to come in. As I'm sure Mira can attest, if he came in with an idea, you were doing that idea. If you went against him, you were dead. Literally, this land is scattered with parents who have lost their children to him. There the fact been... that people can have opinions now. <laughs> it, exactly. Do, do people know that he may be dead? Or it hasn't been very long. No. Yeah. Oh, well, baby, that's well, the fact always that the good news for us. Heard. Yeah. I would well, assume we... everyone on land would know if people in water knew. But I oh, well, want to say us. this. We're kind of quick. Your status as princesses will be meaningless here. I, well, it would be bad for us to lose ourselves. Yeah. But you yeah, know, we can take a <laughs> Yeah, but she can take a uh uh a page out of Penelope Flora's book. We don't have Cthulhu, but we do have Olive Bean and he's traumatized the land. All you have to do is not be as shitty as him. Which even for you would be really hard. So this would be a great time to work on that personal brand of yours and just start building up that following because they will need someone to make them look pretty and not sad about their lives. I mean, um, I just consider it a clean slate, you know. Always leave my mark everywhere I go, don't I? That is what they teach us in his ear. She pees on it. I've also been biding my time with the revelation to some that I would be what they call, not I, um, a child of Olivine. And by that, looks in the mirror at Celia, granddaughter of Olivine. When the time is right, that's probably your best card. Ew. I guess if we need the, the hard... Ew, but if we like, need the hard right votes, then yeah, we can... Yeah. Hard right votes, then we can definitely use that he's my granddaddy card. Um, yeah. But also, we can play both sides, because we can be pro and anti olivine because we are building a new regime, which is also my pitch with the merfolk. Uh, let's start a new brand. Right? I will tell um, you... Uh, the royal family of Wimding is extremely pro olivine Now, I have not talked to them. I've seen them from afar at festivals and parades. They are very nice people. But I'm under the assumption after this time here that because this city has taken great care of the youth, Olivine had less of an authoritarian grasp over this city than others. His was more beneficial and giving which I sometimes find hard to believe, and every day I'm shocked with the stories I hear. So, any stories you have, or that we have, or that I have, about the wickedness of Olivine will be a hard sell. Yeah, so maybe this uh, is where Celia comes in handy, where she's like, I'm the granddaughter of Olivine. Oh, I don't like I mean, let I mean, it's just... You gotta fake it till you make it, girl. That's how you that's how you work this shit, right? I don't know if Celia is capable of doing that. What do you mean? Yeah. She's really good she's at pretty... everything else. She can carry herself. She's a good bar talker. I do think it is interesting because like that sentence you just said was weird. It'd be hard to get them off of Olivine's side or hard to prove that Olivine is evil when historically, even though he's nice to Wimding, it takes a strong amount of delusion to forget that he destroyed the rest of the planet. Um, so, if, like, they are really stuck on that, perhaps the royal family of Wimding is not an ally we need to mate. Um, but I that mean, being here, said, we do like to change stupid. things up. I know, and I hate people. They should never be in charge. So, the thing we've done in the last couple places we've gone is just mix things up, and I happen to know a really cool family who lives in Wingding City who like maybe they would like to you know who? step up in the world 
Oh, you know, we met these people as we were crossing the sea. They called the Boggins. A dragon attacked us. We had to walk on air. It was a whole big to do. But oh, means you died. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fun. Yeah, that was a fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like to look. I just back want to on step it. out of the game for a second and say I literally just mentioned you're going to their house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good ones here. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is their Wait, car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fancy car. Um, <laughs> wait, to the to the Boggins house, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, unless oh. we find out the Boggins are also the royal family, then that would just be awkward. But whatever, we'll figure it are out. They? They're not. They're not. They're not. That would um, be super so, chill for us. Unless they're evil, they're like, no, we're actually super easy. They're really bad leaders. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> we're evil. Um, so yeah, I think that could be a, that, you know, if we can talk to, we should talk, okay. We should talk to the Boggins and people of Wimding to see how they feel about not Olivine, but the leaders, the current leadership of Wimding, in That's lieu fair. of the fact that Olivine is now deceased. So yeah, the guy who yeah. was funding their king and queen to do all that cool stuff they were doing can't pay the bill no more. So mommy and daddy are effectively broke. And I don't think that would sit well with the people um, if they are really used to that because. True. I don't know if you've seen Mizu outside of the kingdom, but she kind of gets a little frantic. And I just imagine an entire kingdom of frantic beings. And you just gotta sometimes oh, allow that's them a good to take way a... to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Arisling did teach me um, psyops, so like I'm I'm really good at infiltration. It's head games are my thing. I don't like... necessarily understand why we would want to disrupt their government if there's nothing that we can do. Well, why not with disrupt their the government? government other than to benefit yourself? I feel like in the like previously we were like oh we're gonna it, like input at us Azir but I, if they're not backing us the princesses anymore then why would we we wouldn't put Azir into Wimding? Oh no, I just I just have this problem with bad leadership regardless, um, and that's why I think if we come in and figure out who the people would like to, like how the people feel about the the king and queen versus like us just not liking them because they're loyalists to olivine um then perhaps we can get better information on how, on how to uh supplement a change that could be better for them just because we know that olivine is a dirt bag they don't know olivine's a dirt bag that dirt bag is just their dad um and so i just yeah. think like helping them separate away from that as safely as possible without making us the villain who is killing their dad but instead of being like oh my god your dad's a gaslighting narcissist that's crazy um and just letting them see that that's a little easier for them personally to cope with um but if he's dead he doesn't really have any power over that anymore but what if, if it's working I, well it's working if it's not working then we can do something about it that's just, we just how I, mean, I see this we don't know if he's dead but also we, we do know that those who are loyal to olivine are alive and kicking. We can't forget about Shark Food Island. They were down to to sink their own island. So, Wingding could be just, be just as wild. So, it's just anyone who's attached to. I kind of look over towards uh, uh, Vafiel. Anyone who's really attached to Olivine just kind of has a, a sour, sort of sour taste in my mouth, just because that is hard to wash out of your system when it's been pushed in there so long. Um, protect, p particularly when it comes to like a governing body. That was why. That was the whole Eudothia problem. It's like, how do you fix a problem that they all want if the people who are in charge just can't do it? Um, so sometimes it just takes a, I feel like it takes a external force to go in there and be like, this system you have here doesn't serve either of you. That's crazy. And they're like, I didn't think about that before. And then it just starts to crumble. But not for self gain. Yeah. Just to be clear, for the greater good of humanity, not us, Miro. <laughs> Well, as long as we have it crumble and then have something to catch and repair things. You can't just let it crumble and leave. No, I agree. That's why, that's why, that's why I want to find someone who, maybe the Boggins or someone else who could step into that position. Because I don't think, I mean, I'm not there. I don't know if the entire system is fraudulent or if it's just, you know, one weird guy hiding a foot fetish. You just never really know if it's like the entire <laughs> police force or just the bad guy. I don't, I don't want to make it. I've, I've learned I shouldn't make assumptions based on like my own preconceived notions. So I do need to go there and like figure out, you know. Well, I wouldn't like to think that like a whole like force of individuals were in defeat rather than just like the one person on the force that was in defeat, you know? 
Yeah, just it lets you really know like what you're dealing with um, and how deep the problem goes. Like if you just need to do a light amputation or be like, we gotta take you out back. Um, so you just know like fingernail clipping or we can we can you, the That's difference between poison and medicine. Right, the difference between poison and medicine is dosage. So I feel like if we can just get the right ah. dosage, then we will be a okay. Um, well, that, but we are known to do something. Hmm. Thank you. It's from Renata. Um, <laughs> um, but that, that that's my interpretation of it. And I just want I just want to bring that forward because I know we all have very different ideas of how to get things done, and the best way probably is to talk about all the ideas so that way we can put the best one together. I like I'm that. Sure. Thank you. I try. As you continue this talk into the night, the sun has gone down. You're going to the Scarf Cthulhu. Uh, Vafia will keep his eyes on the road. And we're going to go to a quick bathroom break. We come back. Oh, thank you. Oh, Wimding City. <gasps> thank you, bathroom break in Wimding City. Sorry we took a minute. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was jumping in excitement with this story going on right now, so I, I missed the time. But welcome back. Okay, you have been driving all night uh, before... Um, if you want to take a rest or something like that, whatever you want to do, I'll give you a moment during that time if you want to do anything. Because I know I kind of cut you off. Short rest. Um. Uh, let's see. I don't know if a short rest would help me, but I might. Hold on. I would I give wild shape, so yes, I So I, yeah, I will also short rest. Did you guys not short rest? On oh, the actually, boat? I short rested on the boat. I'm just kidding. Yeah. We did like four back to back short rests. <laughs> we were like, it's so much time. Oh. Because uh, I got that thing. So actually, I don't need a short rest. Um, <laughs> just kidding. I I'll feel good. All right, we just got off a boat. I thought we were like, we swam here. We were like, we just got off Bakujir's boat. So I was like, oh, wait, we, <laughs> we just had a good ass night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, All right. So as you're driving, um, you pass through the forest, and it is revealed, you see before you, this sprawling kingdom. Uh, you see this kingdom is kind of built on the cliffs of the shore. You see lots of hot air balloons in the air that seem to be shooting down beams of some yellow. You can imagine it's the same as this car, probably some arcana, into these kind of special crates and boxes that are up in the air. Uh, you don't really know what's going on. Um, Vafiel will tell you this is probably probably the happiest place on the planet. Um, everyone here is very joyous. Um, He'll let you know that here, uh, food and healthcare is free. Any food that you need, you go to the market, they will give it to you. Um, extra things, of course, cost gold. Um, your golden shells will be worth double the gold here because they are bigger than gold pieces. Um, he will tell you that the um, royal family is a monarchy except when they die the city gets to vote on mm -hmm. the new monarchy so if the king were to pass his entire family would move out of the castle into a new home and a new royal family would be voted in good to know good to know um as mm -hmm. you're driving up you immediately um uh, come upon the entrance with guard gates on each side um, he will start pulling out some paperwork. He will tell you that, um, however, since you are not citizens, uh, that food and stuff will not be readily available to you for free. You will have to pay for it until you are citizens. It took him four days to become a full-fledged citizen, and he will get out of the car and go talk to one of the guards pulling out his paperwork and talking. I fucking hate this place. Ugh. A honeypot. A, a honey pot. pot? What do you mean? I mean, if I'm gonna, if I need a, a a a fresh source of good little children, I destroy the world and make one place really fucking nice that has free healthcare and free food for everyone who lives here, and I can just come and take what I need. I fucking hate Halloween. Oh, I see what you're saying now. It's like saying life in the sea is great because I'm an Azirian princess. That doesn't really account for everyone in the sea, just my little niche view. That's Accurate. how I feel about winking. But I'm mad about it now. More mad than I was. <laughs> it's really fucking nice here. Yeah, I mean, I definitely prefer it to, I mean, like, Eudothia. I'd much rather stay here. I mean, well, maybe the people are just happy. The people weren't happy in Eudothia. So, like, maybe that's just, like, a difference. Maybe Olivine made them happy here instead of, like, 
I, I don't know. Playing it's favorites. Really confusing. It, it does seem interesting that like in Eudothia, everyone was really angry, but really probably vocal about the thing they wanted. Where I feel like that's the exact opposite in Wimding. Everyone's really happy, but no one can say anything. Otherwise, all of you look at you and you die. Or steal your children. So, like, are they happy or do they have to be happy or face punishment uh, of not longer being allowed to be happy? Because also, mm -hmm. where are you going to go? Into the rest of the world? Like, it's all fucked. Honeypot. True. Because like in you do, yeah, we were just car. before. <laughs> he will put his papers back in his pocket. Okay, well, we're good to go. Um, he's going to drive through the gates, and as he does, you see the guards are just waving at you all. Um, as you get into the streets, you immediately go into the housing district. Um, you do not see any other cars around. You see some horse and carriages. Um, so as you pass, 80% of the people that watch you pass are waving and smiling. The other 20% are just busy and don't see you. But as, as you do that? notice, everyone seems to be smiling and, and waving. waving. And oh, why? Mizu's definitely, uh, with the window rolled down, she has half of her body out like a princess and is, like, pageant-style waving to everybody as they drive by in the car. Mira's in the back like, girl, you think they know who you are? <laughs> They're about to! <laughs> Performance like, check with I'm... a minus three. <laughs> I'm pretty, and she'd be like, I'm minus two. <laughs> you obviously for from somewhere else, blue skin. <laughs> that was that was also, really you, racist you sounding. Still yes. like, oh my God. Do you still, do you still That's look like 18. What did you change to your disguise? Because we had changed no. disguises when we were running, and so I didn't know if you... No, no I definitely look like Mizu. No. Despite, Despite your blue, blue skin, maybe some people are just justifying it as a character, or you're sick, or whatever, but it does not matter in this instance. As you're waving out the window, people are saying, Hi! Welcome, welcome! And everyone's kind of waving at you. You are getting a warm reception. Um, you will notice there are guards without weapons, and they are... They are not just standing around. You see a few that are carrying some crates for some uh, people. There is one that's helping a woman carry her groceries inside. Um, there are a few that are fixing some like potholes on the road, but as you pass, they are all waving at you. See, Mira would like to do an insight check because this does not sit right with her. Like, I'm not yeah. used to You have never to, like, been here before. You, you would not be able to insight anything. These people have legs, for starters. So well, you, yeah, so I already don't trust them, so I would assume just, like, my trust would, like, be plummeted if I really felt that, like, this isn't how princesses of the sea are going to be treated on land. Okay, sure, I'll let you roll. Roll an insight. I'm like, that's just bizarre to me. The DC's 45. Okay. You must have well, what's oh, there. Oh, hang on. Luckily, I got a 15. So it's pretty close. <laughs> He's like, it's only a 38, but I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, come on now. Good thing he said it that high. He was like, Ugh. He was like it's a 30. I, like, I oh, thought 30, and I was like, look who I'm talking to. No way. No way possible. <laughs> I should have been on the safe crazy. side of it, like 2018. Yeah. Oh, oh Michael, you can, you, can, you, can, you can give him guidance. Guidance. <laughs> 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 my God, this has got, my yeah. insight has gone up to a. a Passive twenty. Oh, my insight is a passive twenty-two. It's gotten pretty crazy. Right. I'm not rolling anything. I'm like, I don't have a, I have a oh, dice yet. Your passive insight's a twenty-two. Mm -hmm. And yeah, since you've been around Vafiel a lot, you know everything he's saying is true. You know I'm when Vafiel lies. Wow, I gotta keep that. Yeah, in mind. he really is. He really is mm, pussy, but my mom, which makes sense. She's really good at her job, like aggressively good. So if she wants you to fall in love with her. You will. Have you met the two men she fell in love with? She is running the kingdom through them. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, did, I guess like it, I have the same kind of inclination as uh, Mira, but I'm just more concerned. Like, like Mizu started waving when you mentioned they were waving, but were they always like were they waving before Mizu was waving? Yes. Mm. But they don't know that we're here. Are they waving at the car? Are they, does it seem like are they waving at the car? Like what can we see? Like what they're waving at? Is it like someone new in town? We're so happy. Or is it like oh I know that guy? It's Vafio. Or like it's like has, does it? It's I imagine it's giving like it's a small world vibes like where everybody's mm -hmm. just like happy and joyful for like no reason. Yeah. You're like hey fuck these guys. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. With the architecture so and the people, it's definitely giving the opening number to Beauty and the Beast, for sure. Ugh. 
typical. Okay, that's what she was. Fun uh, fact: taken, but she, like, in Dragon Tooth, famous. when we went to Windy City the first time, they broke out in musical song. So at least they're not <laughs> doing that anymore. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's Thank it's God. because of, you know Trishfoot. It it took all their voices away. <laughs> oh, Bogmac. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't think these. I don't think Seer is. Uh, saying anything. I think she's kind of just like looking around at the scene okay. that is happening because it's so out of place and also she's thinking about what she know what she knew about like the land which would just be kind of like the Suplin, Van Greech, Winding trio because she knows that the problem we had with Suplin was that they used to get supplies from Winding but we couldn't like we stopped we didn't want to have to like deal with whatever was going on there but that wasn't privy to like say ears and all this so she's like now seeing that oh it's run by Olive and it's this really nice place she's like just like connecting some things in her brain that she's like oh interesting and also knowing that this car is made by the Van Greech and Winding she's like processing a lot of things that are happening around her um she's just like looking around just like um, it's got really old renaissance French architectural buildings. Uh, all the buildings are really close. They're all like double st- or two stories at least. Um, everything's very regal. It doesn't look like there's a scratch on any of these buildings. Everything's really well taken care of. In the sky, um, you know, white fluffy clouds, lots of hairy eagles flying around. Um, it's the, the, as you, you know, as... Mizu opened the window to wave. The air comes in. It smells super fresh. Um, Vafiel's going to drive through the streets all the way through different districts. He's going to name them. We're passing through the uh, residential district. We're passing through the trade district. Uh, we're passing through the Arcana district. And now, as we get through, we're going straight to the um, artist district before he's going to pull up onto this um, the side... It's kind of like side wheels onto the sidewalk beside this place. Um, he says they don't really have any designated areas for these things. Um, he's going to point out the window. You see this beautiful two-story building with French-style side doors on both story. This is the um, Boggins Estate. Welcome. Um, why and we... maybe I've just forgotten if you've said this. How do you know the Boggins? Well, after... Well, they took a ride from... With his brother, yeah. See, so you've so you, you just been, have you been hanging out with him since you've gotten here, or just well, like not since I, not since I got here. But when Bach brought them in, he introduced me uh, to them. Oh, well, actually, what had happened is he contacted me so that he could continue his ride and not leave his ship in the ocean by itself. And I um, came up to get them. They were worried that I was going to be passing the Scarf Cthulhu alone. So we went deeper into the river so we could bypass the Scarf Cthulhu and along the, the drive we just became good friends. They're very good people and um, they've been allowing me to stay with them. They are chatty and over trusting. This adds up. Alright. I guess we're going to have a girl reunion. Another one. Uh, he is going to uh, walk out of the car. He's going to open the door uh, for the princesses. He's gonna open both doors, but you can only hold one, so whatever. Um, Hold that mouth! (laughs) Uh, Seer gets out. Uh, He's going to uh, walk up to the door and grab the little clamp on the door. Knock, 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 knock. The doors will open, and you will see the Boggins family once again standing there. And Elena will walk up. Princesses, welcome to Wimding! And she's going to run up and hug Mizu. Uh, Mizu's definitely gonna run up and hug back. To- oh my goodness, it's so good to see you again. I'm like so grateful you guys are back in your home and everybody's healthy and happy and safe. Yes, we yeah, had I quite a little worry the... with uh, Cassia, but it seems everything is pretty good now. And Cassia's just yeah. kind of nuts. Sierra's like, with like looking at Cassia, kind of like making sure she's okay, because the last time I saw her, she was um, hungover from a demon crawling out of her, ma- her face. So, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> um, she tells you Vafiel has... And form, debrief them on all everything going on. I am so sincerely sorry for everything that has happened to you and for the ocean. You are more than welcome to stay here as long as you need. Um, we've already made up a few rooms for you. Uh, take some time to look around if you need. We're preparing um, lunch. Um, and just, you know, get yourself settled in. We're really happy to see you all. Thank you. Fafiel says he will begin to unload the magical items. 
and uh, you see that um, Julius will go with him to, I'll help you, and he'll go get some magic items as well. Um, and Cassia um, will just kind of stick around you guys, and immediately, what's it like traveling the entire ocean? Is your mom really mad at you? Why is your mom mad at you? What are you wearing? Why are you have stinky legs? I really like your hair. Hi, Mizu. Hey, Mizu. Hey, Mizu. Just tons of questions. Uh, Celia would answer any questions she could as bluntly as possible. What's your favorite color? I feel got a big ass mouth. Uh, green. That's too much. Uh, what's your favorite thing you've ever done? Uh, there's a couple of bars on the shark too. Uh, getting wasted was pretty cool for a while. What rhymes with ball? Small. Huh? Do you have a girlfriend? You're small. Uh, no, I haven't really been interested in other people. Do you have a boyfriend? Uh, no, I haven't really been interested in other people. Why haven't you been interested in other people? Do you have a fish friend? Uh, no, people are gross. Fish are cool. Can I stay with you? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Can I stay in your room? Is it, is it also your room? No. I, oh, um, ask your mom. <laughs> I smell bad. Why do you smell bad? I don't really bathe. Why don't you bathe? I live in water. Why? It's comfortable. Why? Who is it's cool. Person? It's cool. It feels cool on my skin. Cassia! Leave them alone and let them get settled in. Come down here and help me, darling. I gotta go. My mom's upset with me again. Okay. Ask more questions later. Okay. You wanna play a game later? Sure. Okay. Bye, Celia. Bye. She's gonna leave. <laughs> leave. This lovely group is the Boggins. Uh, we kind of came across their mom when we were on our way to Yarmouth from Shark Food Island, and uh, we kind of saved her. She was like shipwrecked, and then it was this whole kerfluffle. We were like gonna go like get her kids and her husband, whose like souls had been sucked out on this island. And then we got there, and then we found out there was actually a giant dragon there, and that dragon killed Mizu. What? And then I killed the dragon, and then we found out that actually the the island was like gaslighting the moms. So we went back to the original island, and then we found out that there was a bunch of stuff that was also gaslighting us because our parents were there, but not really there. Also, Bubbles was there, but also not really there because Bubbles didn't leave the castle. That's a given tale. That's like a, a good tale. <laughs> um, and then also we were like walking up things where it was like we're kind of walking up sand but there was no sand really there and then sometimes we'll walk into water but then fall on the spikes but the spikes also weren't there and that's where we found the little boy who was um a vi invisible and attached to invisible spikes so that, that was weird <laughs> yeah but i there fell was on like a spike a, and a landed hole. on top of him so it was okay what the fuck oh yeah so that's how we and then we got back then back to the boat found their mom reconnected them and then sent them off um and now they're here <laughs> This is how you're connected with this family. Yeah, we save them. Jesus. Okay. That's kind of what we do. Either we save things or, like, really mix fuck it up. Fuck it up? Oh. Yeah, I don't say fuck okay. it up. Okay. We I haven't, mean... I don't think we've technically fucked anything up. The worst thing we did was Shark Food Island, but, like, we, like, it, it, the, the balance that, like, got formed after that was, like, not equitable, but, like, it wasn't bad. So... It wasn't all us, too. It wasn't all us. Yeah, we didn't give ourselves all that power. We just had all that power. Um, that's what I'm just kind of hoping for Eudothia at this point, then, I guess. Oh, no, it was, like, literal power. We were, like, 20 feet tall giants, and we were fighting the giant. It was... Y'all been... Yeah, I, killed, okay. I killed their, like, ancient god. It was, like, pretty badass. You... Okay. That is the first thing, like, she did. She, like, he killed their... The, the thing we weren't... Okay, so that could fall into like how we sometimes fuck things up, but like we fixed it after that because we did kill their god that powered their city. Oh yeah, we we sent it away. We didn't kill it. We like banished it. What they just like worship me now or something? Or all of us? Oh, you made it like an equal thing. Okay, didn't see that one coming. They're really into that. Like they like to have like separate but equal. Like there's like four tribes there, and are all like we work kind of like symbiotically um, together and so i guess we kind of represented that really well when a bunch of princesses came together for a unilateral goal mm. so i guess it's kind of metaphorical i mean literal. perception really is reality okay no noted that is, heard on all that that is true oh i got to vote i got to vote with uh shark food i've never done that before that was cool 
Oh, did that happen? Oh, yeah. Did you already, that like, catch her live? Call, right? <laughs> that we got on that weird phone? Yeah. Ah, uh, the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Did Who'd you vote for? Are they cool? You, it was a, check it was in? A, it was a cool. I think it was like refreshing to hear. Honestly, it's been so many days. Who knows? Uh, also, have we have we talked about the the dream that you two have had? I know it was a long time we didn't talk about it. I, I mean, we up. like have kind of talked about to. it, but also not talked about it. If you yeah. know what I mean. Great. Like we've um, talked, but we haven't <laughs> talked. Yeah. Um. So I know you you were kind of mentioning to Rafael or Brian or Daddy whatever you're calling him now um, that you had a dream from Henry and then mm -hmm. you also perked up as if you also had a dream from Henry and I'm just curious why Henry's talking to you two that's just a that's as weird as Daddy calling me why is Henry I the assumed it was because I was the two of you. there, but then Mira was there too. I don't. Yeah, I just interpreted me being there as, "Oops, I accidentally tapped into your head on accident because you're around everyone, and here I am." So I just kind of it could be it. <laughs> you know. It was just the two of you and him. Uh, and Arista. Yeah. Okay, well, she didn't mention that. Okay. She oh, left, secrets. like, soon after. Well, we were all... I, well, at least I was sworn to secrecy after some of the things that oh, I Oh, I was, too. Uh, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, we both were. Yeah, never mind. Well, sworn I mean, to yeah, because... Here, I let that cat out of the bag about the book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was that the secret? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, I guess it doesn't really you matter anymore. To find out that, like, her daddy had the book before her or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, I guess that, it, that cat is out of the bag since now we know that dad did have the book and now he's after the book and he wants the yeah. book and also mom wants the book and also Mizu wants the book. Yeah. I think yeah. that will be really interesting once we get there and like, see, like, who the actually book. gets the book. Yeah, I can't I tell if Michael's doing this or Sears doing this, but in no way, shape, or form has it ever been mentioned that Thrine wants that book. So if you, I just want to let you Thrine, know. Thrine, when, Thrine, when Thrine sent that message and I had that big spear, he told me to bring him the book. He was like, get that book before Misa doesn't bring it to me. That was the mission he gave me. And he was like, do anything. And, and then he told me to do anything. But it's to not, kill. And then it's not a Risley wants the book for power. Mizu wants the book for power. It's I just, I, Mizu can't have that book. Mm hmm well, see, yeah, was, yeah, I, I, I don't think, yeah, I'm just, I, yeah, I'm just saying that he wants the book. I don't think I've mentioned, like, why he wants the book. But I know he, I know he wants the book. And he doesn't want Mizu to have it, which is enough right. information for me to use mm -hmm. right. to work up Mizu. Um, yeah. But also, is enough. It's also factual. Um, yeah, because that's how at least Mira's interpreted like the way that like Sears been presenting things so far, and like from what she heard within the dream is like, oh, like I don't have any definite understanding as to why. I just know that Thrine didn't want Mizu to end up with this, and Sears has to also stated that. I mean, I'm undecided right now because I don't really know what this book does. Like as Mira, I'm just like you know. I, I'm kind of here as an onlooker, and right now I'm kind of seeing both sides. So it's <laughs> like, you know, Misu, if fair. you present close enough, like, girl, I might help you get that book. Yeah, know? I was about to say, while you're onlooking, keep an outlook for that book, babe. Yeah, I think we depends. argued about it last episode. Nova. We did. Like, when we were at the house, it was like that we just kind of mentioned that the book is a, a killing device. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that's the only thing we, like, kind of talked about. Or maybe it was on the boat. Some sort of like calm situation we mentioned that the book is because we were going to wingding and we were like oh what's there and it was amusing to talk about the book yeah um so we know some kind of like weapon but like that's kind of all we know about this thing yeah we were kind of vague about the power yeah we do know it kills people that's all we pretty much know for certain mm -hmm. yeah i think us some of the players have been in that one shot so we know what that book does but our characters and the people who are in this game are like it's really powerful <laughs> yeah like that okay. <laughs> Um, um, I will let you know as you're all being up, set up. Um, um, everyone is inside now. Uh, the father, Julius, uh, and Vafiel are have, bringing all the magical items into the drawing room, and they're kind of talking. Um, uh, the mother is in her kind of study with Cassia, getting some help. And then their other two kids, uh, Lydia and Aiden, are in the kitchen helping uh, uh, finish up some of the food prep. 
Just let you know where everybody is. Continue. Thank you. Um, I'm. It, was there any other information that I do? I think there's any any other information inside the things that Vafio stole from the order, or is it just that map? Or is that map like all the information? Uh, that map has more information, but you're definitely gonna need him to get to it to figure out how to operate this thing because it's not an attuned item it's it's like just very complicated puzzle box kind of thing mm -hmm. okay um and she would just kind of hold that thought in her head um uh, so henry is a dreamwalker and he's getting yeah. stronger and he's prophetic yeah. he yeah. knew that this thing was coming so mm -hmm. it makes sense that mom would know because they obviously Obviously, Mom knew before the, the Order knew because they didn't tell the Order until they knew what was happening, so she just had that information first. Lucky mm -hmm. her. Hmm, is there anything else that we're missing? I feel like we're putting so many... Um, we're trying to solve a puzzle and all the pieces are coming from different angles. Um, why don't you want another... Henry? <laughs> well, that's true. I can't dreamwalk. Or call well, him. The next time he, like, pops in, I mean, he did it very unexpectedly. I feel like it's just a random well, occurrence, but... I feel like he's only done it that one time for me. Oh, I, I, I do have to mention one more time before I forget. Um, Henry was with a person in the dream. He wasn't with a person. Like, we didn't see this other person. But he mentioned right. being with another person. And they mm -hmm. were sort of pushing him to finish up speaking with us um i don't think that it's anybody that i knew I, yeah. I would assume that it's somebody that you don't know but i i also don't know who you know uh seer um and it seems a little I know concerning um but it could have been nothing could have been bubbles who knows um yeah i just yeah. remember it wasn't either one of your parents and i don't know anyone so no, no names or aliases or anything. Just he was with someone you couldn't see. I mean, it was just like a yeah. blurry. Let me figure. ask you really fast, uh, Celia slash Andrew. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to remember as a player, or are you trying to remember as a character? Um, I guess a little bit of both. I'm just, I'm just leaning into my. It, it was a while ago, you and I, I have do remember that he made a comment like "okay" or "I hear you" or something like that. Mr. Pickle. Ah, uh, that's what Sierra wanted because I, I know that. Okay, <laughs> like, well, definitely, definitely, Celia just thought that it was like a cute little moniker for somebody, and it could be. Yeah, yeah, but I'll I'll go ahead and mention Mr. Pickle. Um, but I think it's just a moniker. Hmm. Cute little well, nickname. That, if Mom knew that before, I knew that. And I theorized that the food folk thing was pickling the seed, then she probably definitely figured that out. And it's probably heading. She would want the book to kill whatever is coming because she doesn't want to have to keep fighting things. Mm -hmm. Annoying. She also can't have the book. So sorry for her. Um, but what is she going after? I wish I could just talk to her and ask her, but that's also not really fun. I would like to. I would like to beat her at her own game, and that just makes me feel good. Almost like that time we did with the cops, but like we were like, let's race to the finish line. Um, so I like a challenge. And I always kind of knew I was going up against Daddy with that, because he was like doing whatever with the book. But now having Dad and Mom, I like challenge. What do they want? And also, why aren't they working together? Or are they working together and just both playing dumb to other people? Because let's not forget that while Thrine may be a big old dumb dumb. Arazaline is not, and she has been piloting him and telling him exactly what he needs to know, when he needs to know it, so that he does exactly what he will do the way he always does it. And the fact that he wanted the book, or he was alluding towards that book, keeping it from Izu before Mom was, leads me to believe that he has some, like, their motives for the book were separate and maybe now are conjoined, or are just... Still we separate. Haven't, they haven't said it out loud, so they, neither of them have mentioned that they're looking for yeah. this book to do this thing. Um, or, you know, they are for the same power, so maybe they just want the book to kill the big bad thing themselves, but then who has the book after that one person is dead is my issue, because I don't really think that Vafia was right. Absolute power corrupts. No one needs that book in their hands to just have the power to end a life without having to 
really do anything about it. Like, I love killing, but I like to put my back into it and have some risk of me not winning the fight. And it just seems real, real cheap to just be like, Keisha dies, and then she's just, like, dead somewhere because, like, where's the, where, where's the, the honor in that? What would Bruntaro say? I guess he wouldn't say anything because people die, but ugh, still. It's weird. I feel like yeah. it's like a piece. It's a single, a small, weird. like, pinhole. That we're missing. And once we see that, it's like, uh... Yeah, but even with all that to say, it's like, even if we were to figure out who this person is, and Mizu got a hold of the book, why couldn't Mizu just take care of this person and then be the savior of all the seas, you know? And then still have her book. Like, I'm still confused on, like, why this one entity has to hold it, and not everyone can just, like, write a name well, in the book. If we, if we all know... Do you think that she would share a book that did that? Yeah, if I find it, it's mine. That's Oscar. What'd you say, Andrew? It's hard to control Mizu. It's a good reason why they wouldn't want her to have it. Okay. But I mean, like, yeah. as and far as I've seen, Mizu doesn't make the worst decisions so far. She can make bad ones, though. It's only been, like, three days since you met her. You could really <laughs> use some years of experience. I knew it some does people sort of add it now, you know? <laughs> That's funny. It does add up. And while the Adokia is crazy, I think even they would quiver. Just to, Even the Lithia would quiver at the audacity that Mizu holds when she's in her um, her own tides. When she's feeling her flow, she's crazy. Because Mizu already thinks that she's literally walking in sea of gods themselves. Um, so giving her the any sort of power to back that up would be absolutely cataclysmic. Um, it's kind of like the opposite of what happened with me, where I, I got my power real young, so I was like, oh, I'm going to learn how to use all this. It'd be like her getting it all at one time and being like, I don't like you, and destroys the world. Oh, that's the down... Okay, I see the downfall now. She hates lots of people. And it's really easy for her to hate you. Yeah, but does no, she hate any you, of like... us? Mizu, do you hate any of us? I mean, not right now. Oh, oh. Okay. I know yeah, that I'm in flux. Years. I mean, yeah. Celia's kind of like in hot water most of the time already. It's just like I'm Why? kind of in a good mood right now, so. Oh. Okay. I mean, I mean, Vafio kind of explained the whole, or Brian or oh, whoever yeah, kind of explained the whole Celia's reason in the car. Bathroom. Yeah. Maybe, oh shit. Um, I I poke my head outside to to Vafil. Hey, am I a double princess? <gasps> oh yeah. Uh. Two princess, two uh, princess toys. In, uh, not necessarily. Mirrors Celia, in the back. You, like, okay. You can use I your leverage. <laughs> All right. It's, it's more. We should talk about it at lunch. <laughs> he said I was a double princess. Um. <laughs> so what does that mean, Celia? Are you like? It means the water's the, boiling. You're twice the princess that Mizu will ever be. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, basically. I don't know. Wow. Where. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, if you Buffalo want a reaction, that's not really going to get one out of me because a lot of things that can be written on paper, like we've come to find out, aren't really true, are they? So it's more about um, your appearance and your attitude and your confidence, which uh, all three, she's kind of lacking. That is true. That is, all of those are. <laughs> got me in each of those. <laughs> Damn it, you got me! <laughs> <laughs> If you want people to like you that way, I suppose that works. That point. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, useful. yeah, that's all that really matters at the end of the day is who likes you, because if you're on the wrong people's bad side, then you're not going to be alive. That's all, that's all about it, so I'm glad that I'm in good water with everybody that I meet. Except Mom, I mean, she can fuck herself, but every, yeah. everybody <laughs> else is pretty good. And so you, like, talk to them, and then... In good water with them, though? I mean, I've never met a person that didn't like me i mean maybe besides you guys from like time to time but we're sisters so i mean that's yeah, supposed to happen to you um I yeah, most, people, most people just kind of like yet. meet you and it's like that was really awesome but they don't have to you know share a room with you yeah or i mean she's definitely you. self centered and like only thinks about herself but like yeah nobody that. would ever share a room with me i'd try to avoid that as much as i possibly can so would they yeah i feel like it's it's really it's like a, it's really uh <laughs> 
fun thing to say that you are well liked by people, but also not check in with people who've you've uh, interacted with. It's, it's like there's not really a reviewer feedback system outside of Mizu's own interpretation of those events. Um, cause I can think of a couple maids who probably aren't that, I, a, a lot of people who have worked in Azir who really don't have the fondest idea of Princess Mizuminu. Um, because she's probably sent them off to be murdered and they're all hiding somewhere starting an anti-Mizu club? Who knows? What? I mean, I you're not wrong. That, I'd do it you again, people too. To get mur- Me too! I mean, yeah, I mean... Your your help is like really easily replaceable. It's... No, me too. That's not how you look at help. What do you mean? I mean, I used to do it all the time in the kingdom. I mean, just right before we you left, I had my makeup it, artist like, beheaded. What do you? Oh, dear lord, me too. What? That's crazy. Welcome to day four of Mizu. It, it like I said, <laughs> it just takes some it just takes some time. You, you get there. <laughs> You just I, you get whatever you want when you're pretty. I mean, I'll bring you to the kingdom. You're really pretty. I mean, you'll see how it works. You're a lot more than beautiful, Mizu, and we'll teach you that along the way. Okay, darling. I this this is a learning experience for both of us now. Apparently, I mean, Mira, I'm really excited for you to meet our parents because um, as they are very similar to both Mizu and I, and I think that is uh kind of terrifying. I'm- I'm catching that frisbee right now. I feel like you're mama's girl and this is daddy's girl over here. And that's just, you know, they probably should have divorced is what I'm getting at. Well, it's funny because like as as much as I run my mouth, she has a Razzaline's mouth. I have Thrine's temperament, which is, it's fine. I'll just, it's okay, guys. She's going to have something to say and it's not really going to be pretty. Much like a Razzaline, she doesn't really care your interpretation of her words. She's going to tell you what she wants to tell you, and you're going to just feel how you feel about it because she's yeah. the queen, so what are you going to do? Mizu it. doesn't like her, so she doesn't see that reflection of personality, but they're exactly the same. And that's kind of just the same way I am with Thrun. I talk about him all the time, but I will help him if he needs it because mm. I'm just a nice person. It's but. the twin thing. Okay, I see. Yeah. I try to think about it too much. But it's like a, Girls, a glowing neon flag. Lunch is oh. ready. <gasps> I love food. Right. I'll take some food. <laughs> What's on the table? <laughs> Do I get to be a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> is that vegetarian? <laughs> As you go uh, sit down, uh, Lydia and Aiden are bringing the food around. Um, you know, they're smiling. They're super happy to see you guys. You guys really, you saved their fucking lives. Um that you uh you have individual foods in front of you uh you can tell me what you want they pretty much i will say they definitely put a vegetarian option in front of mizu they have already already experienced experienced. if they were to not do that what the repercussions would be Mm -hmm. except they're gonna ask mira we were kind of unsure what you would like so we made you a couple different things you have some escargot we have some steak we have a nice caprese salad and then we also have this like parfait for you as well that is so i i will eat it all i mean we don't even need to become citizens if you guys are just gonna cook for us i guess fafiel is just going to look at mizu um, and Lucia says, of course, you are more than welcome to stay here as, as long as you need, princess. I mean, despite what is happening in your home, you can consider this home for now. We are indebted to you, princesses. So eat up, and if you need anything else, you just let us know. What is so this, kind. uh, what does this citizenship process look like? Uh, you just have to uh, go before a, a small committee um, to uh, state your purpose, uh, how long you wish to stay, kind of, you're, you're going to get interviewed quite extensively, and they will make a judgment based off all of that. There's no, like, physical challenges or anything. Damn. Sorry. That's only if we want citizenship, though, like, not to be in the town, though, right? Sure, correct. I mean, you can still be, if you were to come in as a non citizen, they will escort you to the trade district, um, and that's pretty much really what you're only going to be able to do. Um, uh-huh. Other than that, you have to be with someone at all times that is a citizen, and they will become responsible for you. I mean, don't worry. Everyone's very nice here. 
Um, if for some reason you got into trouble, um, you go before a judge who is very kind and the people get to vote. I mean, literally, this place has such little crime that the entire city becomes obsessed if there is a crime and it becomes a big thing and the whole city gets to decide. I mean, why would y'all not just sponsor the princesses then if you're already having them here and in your house? Why would you not no, that's, do that's that? What we're Am doing. I mistaken? That's what oh, we're that's doing. What's but if you wanted okay. to go off without us. Oh. Uh, Mira hears in her head freedom in chain cuffs. Hmm. I hear you. Um, well, this food all looks super awesome. I don't know if any of us will be applying for citizenship as I don't know if we'll be staying here too long. We do have Foggins, as you know, we're kind of always on the move. Um, so I don't, I don't think we'll be staying here too long, but we do appreciate your hospitality uh, and all that is happening. Um, so thank you. Oh, of course. I mean, whatever you need. Um, Princess Mizu... Since our last conversation, we have, I mean, we have looked and we have scoured the city for sources. We have found nothing about that book you're looking for. Vafiel has informed us about your mother and your father and everyone who's after this book. We have no information as of right now. Well, I appreciate the effort. Thank you guys, truly. Of course, and we'll keep looking. I mean, what you're looking for sounds, it's understandable why, even if someone knew, they probably wouldn't tell us immediately. But the repercussions from an item like that would become very obvious, so we're pretty... It's pretty safe to assume if someone in this city did have it, uh, they pretty much like everybody here. <laughs> as far as citizenship goes, um, I think that if we're looking for this evil artifact, probably best to not have the Boggins walking around with us. Uh, just for safety reasons. Uh, Julia says, um, I'm good friends uh, with a, a couple of the uh, Wimding protectors, um, so I, I, I do have a good relationship with them. Uh, if you're worried about crime, I, you really don't have to be in, in the city. I mean, I, the, the I last time we heard of someone breaking any sort of law here, was probably when I was a child and uh, there was a nasty murder but um, turns out they were charmed so. well that probably just means that if a crime does happen where somebody's not charmed then they were pushed pretty hard to do that and if you're pushed so hard to do that then it'll be probably a pretty bad crime what I'm hearing is that crime is so rare here that if somebody did commit a crime, they'd get, like, really famous from it, right? Hmm. We wouldn't advise that, because if crime hasn't happened here in a long time... I mean, this is a pretty safe place, but I don't think there's been a lot of exercising of punishment. So, it, it can go either way. It can be very light since... I have to ask, do you plan on doing any crimes while you're here? A princess doing a crime? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just curious. And I don't think you have anything to worry about. As long as it's not a crime to defend yourself. We're getting into territory Wimding seldom mm. knows little about. Yeah, we aren't like aggressive princesses, but we are known to, um move with personal vigor and sometimes that is not good for uh, systems built on a very delicate balance um it's just yeah. curious you know, we're just, I think we're just curious about how that might go or things to look out for but it, it seems pretty pretty cut and dry like if or someone to... happens to smart off and I punch them in the mouth like is that gonna be bad because where I come from like just punching in the mouth is kind of cash yeah, any sort of physical confrontation uh, against someone else's will is, is very much frowned upon here. Ah. Uh, question. You mentioned that there was a murder and someone did it while they were charmed, so they didn't get in trouble for it. Did the person 
who charmed that person ever get found? Or is that kind of just... This happened when I was a young boy. This is Julius talking, the father. Uh, I, I do remember... I remember the, the family was was given a lot of resources afterwards and was taken care of. I guess you can say they became famous. They, they really gained the city's sympathy. I don't remember what happened to the murderer, per se. I was very young. I believe my parents probably shielded that from me. I can do some research and come back to you with that. I'm, that would be lovely. I'm just scratch a neurological itch. Cassia speaks up. Have you ever murdered anyone, Celia? Yeah. Well, not murder. Um, killed? Yeah, but I haven't, like, just killed someone for the sake of it. Why? Uh, probably, like, self-defense. A lot of it is self-defense. You know, somebody attacks me, like, I'm not just gonna sit there. Why? Uh, because in those instances, oftentimes, uh, somebody's trying to kill you, and I didn't want that to happen to me. What? Cassia, eat your food, darling. Um, it's okay. I'm so sorry. Uh, she's been very curious after everything. I think whatever Princess Mizu did really sparked uh, an interest in everything. In her. Well, it's a perfect... I mean, we're eating, she's feeding her brain. That's that's. What did I mean. Mizu do? Uh, uh, le- anyways, um, and you see uh, Elena's gonna look at you like... Um, yeah, see, your face kind of sour. She's like... Mm. Uh, I will say, however, we have been doing some other research, um, kind of brought back the idea of what's happening with um, certain uh, fish and stuff. We were talking this swelling inside the ocean. There is um, a woman named uh, Halla Starlight. She runs the local Starlight Playhouse uh, down the street. Um, We happened to see a play there um, when we got back, sort of... uh, a mixer, you know, we, we, we reach out a lot here in the artist's district. And she had mentioned she had heard about that, and she was very worried about it. And when we pressed her on it, she seemed kind of secretive, like something was bothering her. But after some research, uh, her family were uh, very well-known fishers in Wimding City. And there's something there. So maybe in your adventures, if you want to check out the Starlight Playhouse, perhaps they might have some more information as well. Just thought that would might be up your alley. Oh, it absolutely is. Uh, though I don't feel particularly in the mood to go see a show tonight, that is something that we should definitely look into because... Oh, they don't you know, have again, a show tonight. Can... Oh, perfect. Um, again, just being the conspiracy theorist I am, if I were to you know, start a whole war... I go where no one was looking, which is the happiest place on earth that also happens to have technology and arcano things combined together that do all kinds of fun things like mess with the sea. True. But you know, I don't know, just thought, just thought. I'm loving this this meal. How long did it take to for you to to, to make this? Uh how long, Aiden? Uh well I mean it took us about like an hour. You? Well, Lydia and Mom and I. It's delicious. Thank you. This is amazing. Well, th- you, thanks. You this have a gift. This is a gift. Um, and Mom has us uh, training at a, a local culinary school here on the block that's been teaching us. I'm glad you like it. I was afraid that I put too much salt in it. I like salt. I'm from the ocean. I thought about that, so I added a bunch of salt, but then I thought I'm, I might be like wrong well if anything you can just make it as normal and then and then you can ask you can you can always add salt you can't take it away maybe you can teach me more about some like underwater food uh oh i'm not the guy to talk to Cassius about that liquid diet. you know food i know food uh you know i've seen food people yeah me too not oh. real. Yeah, wait, you have? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes at the farm here, they have to catch the food. They get really upset. Uh-huh. They grow, like, food people here? Mm-hmm. Right? They grow the food here, and then sometimes they come out of the ground, and they're like, ah! Do they get angry? We, uh, 
a while back, um, the Scar of Cthulhu kind of pushed itself towards the Wimding border and even inside towards the Noonan farms. Uh, they had some soil problems, so they imported some soil from closer to uh, uh, silverware. And since then, it seems they have had some trouble with sentient food. I don't yeah. really know too much about that. I find the whole ordeal kind of strange. Like, what do they do? It sounds a bit familiar, to be honest. Yeah, hey, where was that soil coming from and going to? Uh, the Noonan Farms. Up and now, we, we all know that that's how the sentient food folk become alive. From the soil, there's a small chance that it can become sentient. Mm -hmm. But we're not really sure what they do with them when they do become sentient. And we try to keep our children away from them. Um, we have well, taken a visit to Silverware before on vacation. It was very pleasant. So I just, whatever is happening with that food is very different. We've tried to teach our children not to judge. While well, you're looking stuff up, like for us, all this other stuff, try to look into that a little bit too, because it's been. Um, yeah, like what's around that? Silverware? Like. Well, the Silvernell is, is, is four districts with a prime minister. Well, technically five if you count the portal to the Fae. Um, yeah. You've got uh, Bredenborough. You've got uh, Vegetin. You've got Fruitford. And you've got. Uh, Sweetvale. Okay. You said you've been I'm there. Is it cool? Right. Yeah, oh, we, yeah, we took a trip and we stayed in a, a, a little um, inn in Vegeton. You know, they were very kind to us. They seemed like mm -hmm. very kind people. So I heard that the li not lizard folk, Lord. I heard that the food folk that were uh, there were some food folk appearing near Suplin and Van Greech that were kind of acting out of character of sorts. There were reports of them running towards the sea, which you could probably corroborate is not the normal energy yeah. of your typical food folk. Uh, so perhaps yeah. there's something about them not being them being born outside of the Feywild or outside of that Well, recently, like I guess more soil that is, is caused, like maybe they need the soil to live and so that, since there's no more soil, they're like awesome. looking for another option because they were born outside of the Fey. Right. Well, I'm, I mean, I, I believe the majority of the food folk that are alive in Silverware I mean, I believe they're they're all born here. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm not too... I can look that up for you. However, we have noticed a lot of shipments of food coming through Wimding City towards Sumplin. Maybe there's been something worked out. So if that's happening to them, it's probably something similar that's happening to us. Um, I, I don't know too much about that. But I, I, can, I can have someone look into that uh, for you guys. How, how much uh, transparency does... I don't know if the, the royals are in charge of... Um, general assembly and knowledge alerts how much do they typically tell you of things that are happening outside of the walls of wingding um there is a statute which is uh you know knowledge for the public you just have to request it i don't think of anyone i've heard that's been denied that public knowledge um there's a lot of relationships between sumplin and van creech and silverware not so much Veilcast. Veilcast is very hostile um, but even uh, Crixen as well. So I'm sure if you were to ask the kid, you do have to be a citizen to put in a public record request, however. So we can do that for you. If you want to write down some of your questions, we can look into that. If I have some, some more specific ones, I'll, I'll bring them up. But that kind of answered the general lot of them. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. I guess, you know, to be honest, like, it's just, it's just too nice here. Like, I, I don't know, I've, like, seen the world. I've seen a lot of places in the world, and there are some nice places in the world. There's some nice people in the world. It just seems... Too nice. Is it? Thank you for saying it. I don't know if it was possibly too nice, but it's definitely no, it's given too nice. Too nice. Well, yeah. I, I, I say there's not much to compare it to. Uh, Silver Rail seems very nice as well. Uh, Van Greech is sort of hostile. They're their own thing. They're very good with trade. I don't deal a lot with them. Um, I know some people that do. Uh, and Sumplin is very quaint. Um, but it, it generally, you know, I think we get a kind of a, a judgment as the nicest place on earth. But, uh, you know, other than Crixen and Van Greech, and especially Veilcast, 
I mean, there's, I think Silverware is pretty kind, and Sumplin has shown kindness as well. It's just, you know, our our monarchy here has been very diligent, and we have a lot to thank for our overlord, Olivine, who has been very generous to us as well. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm sure as you spend more time here, you, you'll get used to it. Mm -hmm. Which part? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the niceness of the city? The happiness, oh. the happiness of it, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I heard... <laughs> my brain just kind of blacked out for a second there. Um, y y perhaps. It's just, you know... Uh, I'm trained to look for hostile targets. <laughs> my brain's just pinging everyone right now. Because <laughs> who's always as happy? No one. They'll... Uh, 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 Vothiel speaks up. Um, Elena, Julius. Uh, I know we've spoken about this before. Olivine does not have the same reputation to all the civilizations around the world as he does yours. I know we've had a little bit of arguments about this, but Mira here is from Eudothia, and despite what you've been told, and what everyone here has been told, the ocean is not a pool of monsters. Oh, we know Vafiel. We, well, I just want to clarify that the princesses here experience a very different olivine than you may have here. Um, a lot of... It's just different. And I am hoping through the conversations that you all have together, you will come to understand some of their complaints which are just... And I hope the princesses will see that, albeit his control was toxic, unfortunately, Poison. I have to admit some good came out of it, which I do hate to admit. Um, but I'll just leave that there. Not Vafio making sense. I mean, I do have the power to see a good plan, and I, I often find myself agreeing with Olivine in theory, never in practice. Um, but Mira, did you happen to know that Olivine thought of you all as ghouls and monsters? That's an interesting revelation for me. Quick out-of-body experience. Mean, you remember Olivine demanding things from his ghouls and monsters of Eudothia to do his bidding. Over time, ghouls and monsters kind of had like a... To some, because, you know, Eudothia is full of a bunch of assholes sometimes, um, kind of like a... Like Mr. Pickle, like a my ghouls and monsters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you oh, do remember... don't find it as derogatory as others do. You do remember the cruel punishments, death, hanging, dismemberment, all the stuff he would do to the merfolk that went against him. But there definitely was preaching from him about everyone else in the ocean. So you can kind of relate to that a little bit. The princesses mm -hmm. have been really the first positive non-monster influence yes. that i found yeah, yeah. We're, we're dealing with a bunch of different brainwashing coming together right now mm -hmm. i love seeing a narcissist plan fall apart because he's obviously just like mm, like i'm just gonna lie to them i'm gonna lie to them i'm gonna lie to you can't lie to all your girlfriends they're eventually gonna meet they live on the same street come on now <laughs> um but i'm definitely am the person who's like you should all meet Oh my god, you should all just hang out and have tea and just talk about that cute boyfriend you all have. I don't know his name. And then they just, John Tucker must die him. And I'm well, like, it's yeah, been a while crazy. since he's been here, but I'm sure, Julia says, when he returns to the city once again, uh, perhaps we can all go and, and speak with him. He is... What do you mean, <laughs> returns to the city once again? See your laughs. Vafiel just looks quickly between the two. Oh, There's... they don't know? They've been told. They've and, been told what? And Julia says, there's no evidence. Well, of? You say there's that. no evidence of what? Finish that sentence. Please. We have not seen evidence of Olivine's demise. Oh, we have not seen evidence of Olivine's demise. Or his fall. So you're not believing it. We're just saying we are skeptical until 
And it's not just us, I mean... Proven otherwise. So the fact that everything that's happened where I grew up and where I was raised and where my home is, the fact that it fell apart and Olivine did not show up to restore or do anything that benefited himself in that instance, you don't think that's proof enough that this motherfucker is not around anymore? Persuasion with a minus three. That's like a negative one for you. <laughs> negative two. That comes out to a three. <laughs> We're not saying that it's it angry. couldn't po be a possibility that he could be detained or trapped. Detained. But the very nature uh of his immortality, we need to see evidence for this. And if we were to go out into the streets right now and say this, our reputation would become more and more tainted. We're not you do know people. that even gods die. Alamee's not always as immortal. <laughs> Alamee may not be as immortal as. Well, let he me gets ask off. you what what have you what have you seen? You speak of his disappearance in Eudothia. Um, what else? Maybe he just didn't go back. We were one of the places he would need to return to in order to maintain his weird perspective over the Silver Seas that he had. Um, Aiden pops up. Maybe he just didn't like you guys anymore. Aiden, that's inappropriate. We're not going to be rude to our guests. Why do you apologize. feel that? No, hang on. Why does no. Aiden feel that way? Why would Aiden feel the need to say that to us? Because it definitely comes from parenting, in my opinion. I if know. I know I think, anything, someone talked, someone Aiden, had to fucking feel that way. You don't want to get me a in a tizzy, bitch. It's Olivine all didn't thing. love people in the sea, and, you know, that's, I think that that's enough reason. Everybody knows this. That's enough reason for us to, for, hated, for them to assume that. Okay, uh, uh, Mira intimidation check minus three. Uh, Celia, a persuasion check minus three. Mm -hmm. That's a nineteen sign. with the minus three. <laughs> wow. Oh wait, no, hang on. I did math wrong because I plused my plus and then minus three. Or is that how I'm supposed to do it? Or is it just a set minus three to my roll? No, no, no. You can add your. Oh, no, it's it's still your plus one and then mm -hmm. minus three. So yeah. it'd be a minus two. Mm -hmm. I got a nineteen. Both of you got a 19? Yeah. Okay, so the family gets kind of quiet looking at Mira um, and then goes to say something, but then Celia talks and they just kind of look. And they kind of just don't know what to say. Uh, Vafil's kind of looking. There's definitely an awkward silence. And Aiden speaks up and goes, I like him because he helps me. He walked me to school and he helped me when I couldn't figure out my homework. Like what do you personally? think happens when you, like, aren't a kid anymore? Because, you know, he likes kids, right? So when you, a child, stop being a kid, do you think he's going to continue to be as helpful to you? Maybe you can, oh, wait, Vasil, you can tell, have you told him about your experience with Olivine? Great question. There is a lot of psychological trauma to be unpacked. I'm, I'm not so sure hitting it super hard just at lunch will be beneficial. I do agree. I think the princesses are correct, uh, Julius. There is a bigger conversation to be had. And I do accept that you wish to see evidence. He was immortal. What could possibly trap or kill an immortal being? But the princesses come with facts. He has not returned to Eudothia. They have heard exactly how he passed. And even though the evidence is from Veilcast, I think it is credible. Julian says, I am not disagreeing. All I wish is to see it. That's all. I don't believe you, you need a... it with my experience that Olivine could be stopped. And I really, with my experience, don't believe Olivine would do anything to hurt the citizens of Wimding. And with that, you hear a bunch of screaming outside, and that's where we're gonna go.
I bet we do. So. <laughs> you better better choose those words carefully. Right? <laughs> you gotta find I'm out. I'm burn his bitch out on principle. <laughs> like, I am Olivine. I'm back. I'm just gonna start fucking shit up and being like, oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 Thank you everybody for playing. Thank you at home for watching. And if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. Hit that like. Uh, more episodes to come. Thank you guys so much. This was fun. I love the drama. We'll see everybody for 34 and see what the hell is happening outside. Sound good? 30. Oh. Yeah. Or 34. Yeah. yeah. All right. Bye.